In the days of film photography, Fort Lambda was one of the biggest names, especially until the sort of early 70s. In the um, late 50s it had a really successful range of 35mm cameras called the Vitos. It had a Vito 1, a Vito 2, a famous Vito B. The Vito 1 was a folding 35mm camera which came out in about 19, I think it was about 1936-37. Um, after the Second World War that camera continued as the Vito 1 but by 55, 56, Fort Lander had introduced the Vito 2. And that is what I'm looking at today, the Vito, Vito 2A. And the improvement on the previous model is the Rhinon mechanism here and the fact you have a slightly enlarged viewfinder. The viewfinder on the original Vito was extremely small to look through. You've still got the slightly odd hatch here, catch, hatch, catch, in order to open the camera. And when we open the camera, we do have a sprocket here, which we didn't have on the Vito 1. So it's a little bit more conventional in the rind on. We've got a nice, it's nice and easy to pop a film in here. We can move that up there by this spring here and the film goes in manually here. And there's a nice, there's a slit in the take up spool there. So we slot the film in there nicely. To open the camera, there's a button on the bottom. And then we have this nice spring out lens here. The shutter, I always like, it's here. And in taking, it's extremely ergonomic. It's a completely manual camera. Fortlander made several models with different lenses. What is great about this particular camera is it has a colour scoper lens. Now the colour indicates that it's coated. The pre-war lenses were not coated and the coat, coating of the lens definitely helps um, to guard against glare. Some people like particularly to use non-coated lenses but it's, a coated lens is, gives you a bit of insurance against glare. Now to use this camera we have to we have no range finder so we have to estimate our distance. This camera is set in feet so it looks like it's uh, um, was particularly destined for the British or American market. If we find one in meters it's for the European market. So and I was fascinated by the fact Obviously we have infinity mark, but we have some other little dots here. We have an arrow at just over 10 feet. And I think that is indicating a sort of, um, so we have an arrow at just over 10 feet and we have a circle between 20 and 60. 60 is quite a distance. Um, I think the arrow is a general focus point if you wanted to set it so that you could just um, click. Um, the aperture is um, a, it's a 3.5 lens on here, so not the fastest but not a bad lens. Um, and you simply set the aperture here. I did find that that was a tiny bit fiddly to operate. Likewise, you must set the shutter by this lever here. You, what we call cocking the shutter is to bring it up there in order to. You have to have a film in the camera to for it to operate. Or basically, if I just bring on there, there we have the shutter and to ride on. 
you do need um, a meter or to know the sunny um, sunny rule which basically says if it's very bright and you are at one one two fifth of a second f f16 sunny rule so f you are put it to f16 is if it's really sunny a bit cloudy f11 8 door 5.6 that is the sunny rule or use a light meter the great thing about this camera is how portable it is you see at that makes it a very small light camera plus the lens is really protected but even ideally you have this in a nice leather case but even if it isn't in a leather case the camera is protecting the lens really well there one thing i did forget to mention that um, <coughs> to get the counter back to start you um, have to pop this up here and you move it on until you get to start see that is moving there what is the camera like to use remember it's completely manual so you are having to think about focus aperture shutter speed the shutter speeds are quite limited on this camera the fastest is 300th of the second the great thing is its portability and it is a nice sharp lens when i was using this camera recently i did find that the lens wasn't perhaps as contrasty as a modern lens but i liked that fact i thought i had a good range of tones from uh, variation in grades i really liked this photograph here uh, in Dorchester near the playing field it is a little bit dull but I liked the tones it's what I hoped I would get there this is really testing the lens and shooting straight into the light and I think the lens has coped incredibly well here this was a tiny bit soft I thought but on the whole the lens is sharp this is walking across the water meadows in Dorchester to a lovely small hamlet called Stinsford. And being Dorset, we have a lot of sheep. And here we have a slightly um, interesting group here. And in the distance, we see the church of Stinsford. I agonised about this composition, whether to put the church right in the middle or to make it slightly offside. Um, I'm not sure if the framing is correct there. Um, an interesting dilemma, I thought. The sheep were behaving incredibly well, I thought. Again, slightly into the light here. But again, I think the cameras coped moderately well. This was a dilemma to take as well because I was fascinated by the tones on the lovely brick wall but the reeds actually distract you from looking at the wall. So I'm not sure if that works as a photograph. But in photography you have to take risks and I think why I really like film is you don't know what you are, and particularly black and white, you don't know until you actually see the photograph. That's looking up a lane. I think that was about, it was very dark and I think I must have gone to F 2.8 and it is a bit soft there, but I just felt that was slightly interesting. This is Stinsford Church. Now the thing about Stinsford Church is it's, it's not only a lovely Dorset church, again, interesting how sharp that was compared to the previous photograph. The photograph of the seat isn't sharp, where that photograph is pin sharp, I would say. Again, I quite like the tones of the wall here. It has two very famous poets buried here. It has Thomas Hardy. Thomas Hardy was an author, wrote a lot of books on Dorset, and I think he's a great novelist, died in 1928. And I didn't take a photograph of the poet laureate um, T. Day Lewis, 
who is buried just five graves down from here. Actually, you see Dave Luz's grave is the last one on the right hand side. He's the father of um, Daniel Day Lewis. It's a very peaceful spot, Stinsford. This is the outer courts of college. Again, I was took this because of the tones, and those are interesting signs saying butchery department, which you can hardly read on this photo because it's in the distance. Some typically Dorset thatched cottages. Again, it was a slightly bleak November afternoon, so the light is not fantastic, the conditions are not fantastic. However, sometimes, as I've said before, grey has a charm of its own. I'm always slightly fascinated by signs, not quite so why, but I, well, I think it's we are all on a journey and signs are important. So here is a road sign, the Falklander, a real classic, a real legend of a camera. You do have to think about what you're doing, but surely it's good to think sometimes. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.